want to share with you a part of a journey that I've been uh, accompanying and part of. Uh, this past June, I sat in the Great Hall where we had our 20th anniversary uh, of the Via Campesina in Jakarta, Indonesia. And I was, I think it's not an exaggeration to say, bursting with joy and pride as I saw that we had uh, taken the leadership of the Via Campesina and put it into the hands of a woman from Zimbabwe in Africa. This was the first time that uh, a woman is the, uh, is the operational, operational secretariat leader. And it's been a long, long journey to get there. Because agriculture and farming, agriculture is deeply patriarchal. Our own Canadian experience is that uh, land titles accrue to men. Homesteads were given to heads of household, male homes, uh, heads of households, or in the case of widowhood, the eldest son. There are very few examples where women uh, had actual ownership of the resources. We've struggled long and hard in Canada, and we have changed that. But elsewhere in the world, that's still the case, that women have a very hard time uh, actually uh, owning or having secure access to the resources to produce food. And that's reflected in the organizational structures, that re that's re reflected in agricultural uh, uh, businesses and in governments. The exclusion of women and from, from that leadership, from those decision-making tables. But when you actually look at who's feeding families, who's growing food, who's producing food, who's cooking food, who's provisioning for families, households, neighborhoods, communities, very often the key players, the key workers there are women. So there's that dissonance between who makes the decisions and who actually does the work of feeding people. And we've, as I say, we've struggled long and hard in our movements to try and change that. And in the Via Campesina, it has been a long road. And we brought to it from various parts of the world our strengths. When we met in Tlaxcala in 1996 as a first delegation, there were lots of women in the room. But when the caucuses, the regional caucuses, elected who would be their leadership, we had seven regions of the world. We had seven males elected. And then we women were discontent. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> let me understate. We, yeah, we were discontent, and um, and so we 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 uh, actually uh, forced the caucuses to go back into their regional caucuses and try again for a better representation of equality and uh, and justice for women, and uh, we came back with six men and one woman from the North American Mexican region. They offered me that position. So I, for some years, worked in that context. That's why I say this has been part of my road. I worked in that context long and hard. By 2000, we were in Bangalore. I brought from the experience of the National Farmers Union. We're agrarian feminists here in Canada. And now that we've just celebrated Persons Day, you will notice agrarian feminists were very, very seminal in taking uh, our place in public life and struggling for equality. So I brought that gender parity of the structure into the, uh, to the table. And from elsewhere in the world, particularly from Central and South America, women had already articulated themselves in very strong women's commissions and women's work. And they brought that strength and that leadership to the table. And by this year, we were in a place where we actually took that history, that deep history of movement, though, and honored that history and brought it to the table and took our rightful places in a way that will, um, I think, help to shape 
the organization, the movement, and the social movements in radical, diverse ways because equality and respect is not sameness. It is diversity and life-giving. Thank you.